Hello everybody, it's Stuart A. Swordlow. And Janet Diane Moria Swordlow. For Expansions.com and this is the third week in July 2012 and we were hoping to do another podcast outside in the beautiful sunshine but since the last podcast that we uh, broadcast to you and we've told you about the drought and the heat so many of you have been kind enough to pray for rain for us that it actually worked. So now it's pouring rain outside and the drought is uh, hopefully over, but we cannot do our podcasts uh, in the nature for you. So here we are inside uh, talking about very, very serious, important things. And of course, the big story this past week is what happened at the theater in Colorado where 12 people were killed and where I had mentioned on my website that two incidences have occurred so far, the bus being blown up by, with Israeli citizens in Bulgaria, the attack at the theater in Colorado, and it's my opinion, and I'll say it again, that before the Olympics start on the 27th, it's very possible that there'll be a third incident, perhaps on a third continent. So we have to keep our eyes open for that. Interestingly enough, I came across uh, some information about the symbolism that happened in the Colorado theater. And this was from truthseeker444.blogspot.ca. Uh, so I would imagine that that is a Canadian site. The person's name was Sandra Barr. Very, very interesting information. Uh, the person writes that the uh, four primary Egyptian deities uh, of ancient Egypt were Set, Isis, Osiris, and Nephthys, their initials S-I-O-N, spell Sion, or Zion as it has it become known. And if you uh, take the letters and, and put them together collectively without repeating the letters, you can get the word hypnotizer. It's interesting so. that you bring that up because I posted something on my Facebook about Lady Gaga and what Gaga means. So I'm yes. not going to tell you here, but go to my Facebook page. It's a very interesting post, so look that one up. And I want you to look at this, the shooter's face, this James Holmes. Uh, you can see, look at his eyes. Um, and there's better pictures on the internet uh, if you look at uh, his eyes. They, they don't look forward. One looks one way, one looks the other way. One eye is larger than the other, which is a very strong evidence of mind control and programming. I'm sure he didn't even realize what he was doing. And in fact, he left a message on a, uh, a phone machine not long before the, um, the incident. Uh, and it was to a, a guy in a shooting range in Colorado where, he, where apparently this James Holmes wanted it to, to practice. And the owner of the... Um, of the shooting range said the voice was guttural, freakish, maybe drunk, just weird and bizarre. A deep, guttural, forced voice. So uh, apparently uh, he was in an altar when he called. Um, or perhaps it wasn't his voice. Perhaps they somebody else. It could have been somebody else. Uh, you know, uh, when we see a person who uh, comes from California, has a Tennessee license plates, uh, creates the incident in Colorado of three different areas of the country moving around. Uh, so usually that is a sign of an intelligence service operative mm -hmm. where you cannot uh, trace them uh, completely to where they, they need to be. Plus you have a triangle right there, those three states. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is a triangle. But the thing is also the date of the murder is July 20th, 2012. Um, and you can go on this website that I, that I gave you earlier um, and, and look at it the way the numbers come across um, that they add up to the number nine and they uh, represent Satan and death according to this person and the 12 dead represent the 12 astrological signs, the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 disciples and 12 adds up to three which is a completion or a triangle or again the number three which is why I'm thinking there'll be a third incident uh, before the Olympics. Um, there's so much here, so much here in symbolism. I can't possibly go through all of it. It would take days uh, to go through all of it. Um, but, uh, of course, uh, there's a lot to, to talk about. Um, in fact, uh, I'm just trying to get uh, to this a very important page here. The, 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 it happened at uh, the Century 16 Theater. Uh, and if you take the, uh, the word century, which means 100, and the number 16, you get 116, 116. And if you hold it up to a mirror, 
it becomes 9-1-1, So another false flag operation uh, designed to, to terrorize people. Um, and uh, according to this, uh, and the picture is too small to show you, but at the Olympic site in London, there's an 80-foot wizard sorcerer uh, tower piece that looks like a giant phallic symbol on a place called Orion's Point. And it's on a, a river that kind of looks like a snake. So uh, look that up uh, when, you, when you go uh, onto, the, onto the websites to look for the symbolism. A lot going on here. Um, obviously, the Illuminati are building up the energy, staging some major event that I do believe will happen um, during the Olympics. I've heard all kinds of dates, uh, August 12th, August 2nd, August 4th, uh, even the end of July. Uh, who knows? I, I don't think it'll happen in the beginning, but somewhere in the middle to end uh, of the Olympics. So that's what, what I'm thinking happening. And of course, right after this event in uh, in Colorado, there was a car accident, a terrible uh, car crash or van crash in South Texas that killed 13 people, which then, uh, 13 of course is a big Illum Illuminati number. Um, and what does it all have to do with? It has to do with perhaps gun control, because remember, the Illuminati want to remove guns from the public, and there's a big UN push in the United Nations to remove guns from the public globally. And uh, interestingly, the United States is a thorn in their side because there are an estimated 270 million guns in the hands of private citizens in the United States, which makes the Americans the most heavily armed people in the world. Guess who's second? The tribal people of Yemen. So yes, the Americans are more armed than the uh, so-called terrorist country of Yemen. and. Uh, in, two, in 2010, uh, the last year that these statistics were done, there were 100,000 people in the United States shot by guns, and that caused more than 30,000 deaths. I remember what we were reading about uh, Switzerland, and you were telling me about Israel, that, El, that they give uh, guns to all their citizens in Switzerland, and they train their citizens on safety and how to use them, and they have the lowest, one of the lowest death rates from guns in the world and also the Israelis also train their citizens as well. Yeah, and um, uh, actually, just as an aside note, even though that sounds like a very large number, 30,000 people killed uh, by guns in the U.S. every year, doctors in the United States kill over 50,000 people every year by medications, false uh, or, or wrong surgeries, etc. So doctors actually kill more people legally than the guns in the United States. And so just keep that in mind. Yeah, and that's documented. You can look that one mm -hmm. up. Yeah. Now, on in other news, uh, it's kind of related, but it goes to the uh, birth certificate of uh, President Obama. And as we know, the sheriff in Arizona, uh, Sheriff Arpaio, uh, has been investigating this. And according to the Arizona Sheriff's volunteer posse, they have declared uh, President Barack Obama's birth certificate as a definite fraud. According to Maricopa County Sheriff Joe Ar Arpaio, uh, he said that there is a probable cause that Obama's long-form birth certificate that was released by the White House in April 2011 was a computer-generated forgery. And um, investigators are uh, investigating the fraud uh, Obama campaign declined to comment on the allegations, obviously. So keep your eye on that one. Um, and looking as far as criminal activity is concerned, did you know that your Facebook page is monitored for criminal activity? In fact, according to uh, um, an article that was released uh, uh, according on the, on the internet, the Facebook social media network and other uh, social uh, uh, internet sites are tipping off police if they detect suspicious behavior on your uh, Facebook page or any, any other uh, social network site that you have. Um, they look for words or certain phrases and then they notify uh, Facebook employees and then the Facebook employees, if they feel something is wrong, will notify the uh, authorities. So watch what you write on the internet. Um, and uh, just a couple of other things I wanted to get across to you. Apparently, 
according to some uh, leaked, and I always put that in quotes, leaked uh, intelligence information, uh, it's been decided that the United States will attack Iran in the fall, and that the first week of October is now uh, the decision uh, time for attacking, which is not good for me because I'll be traveling at that time in that area. Uh, they also said that uh, uh, an Israeli attack against Iran would actually strengthen the Iranian uh, regime instead of weakening it. And by the way, the Iranians did condemn the attack on the Israeli bus in Bulgaria, so that's very interesting. And finally, as far as the EU news is concerned, apparently there's been a, uh, um, a reference by many of the uh, sites in Europe that talk about the EU, and they, talk, and they call it the United States of Europe, uh, Ten Nations, EU Empire, German Dominance, German Empire. All these terms have been used by the media to describe what's going on in the EU which they consider to be an imperial, I put this in quotes, an imperial entity dominated by Germany. And according to documents that came to light in the last 10 years and that were translated from German into English that were from the Nazi regime over 70 years ago, the plan the Nazis had for Europe are, is almost uncannily identical to what the EU is perpetrating on the rest of Europe right now. So we are seeing perhaps Angela Merkel uh, picking up where her daddy uh, Adolf left off. And uh, so we have to keep an eye on that. And mm -hmm. over to you. All right. Well, that was that was fast and succinct. All right. I keep it simple. Well, mine may not be quite so fast. Hopefully it's succinct enough to keep your attention because I always tell you things that I find fascinating. And again, I'm, I'm showing you the trends out there because I want you to pick up on them as well and learn to pick them out for yourself. So... I'm going to start with aliens because aliens, of course, is always an interesting topic um, that very always draws you in because we're all wondering about what's going on out there beyond us. In that light, I want to tell you that researchers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology have discovered snow on Mars. Unlike snow on Earth, the article says, Martian snow is very small and made up of frozen carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, not water. The carbon dioxide snowflakes are about the size of a red blood cell, so they appear as more of a cloud of fog on the surface of the planet than individual flakes of precipitation. Again, this is the way the entry point is, and eventually they're going to say, oh, you know what, it is water. We do have water on Mars. Mars can sustain life. And that will lead to other revelations, as you know from reading some of the things that we have been uh, writing and talking to you about for many years. Now, hopefully all of you saw on, again, my Facebook, I have a lot of interesting things posted on there, and you don't necessarily have to be my friends to see what the posts are, but I posted on there, um, I don't know, it was a couple weeks ago or so, about mermaids, um, and it was from Animal Planet, I believe. It was, was a couple months ago. Was it a couple months ago, that long ago? Time passes. Anyway, about mermaids. Well, we, the basis of the post on uh, by Animal Planet was that perhaps there are mermaids. It's kind of a long story. You'll go read it. But remember, again, opening the frequency, we now have a bathing suit company started by a Vancouver mom, Monica Nauman, um, who has a company called Three Fins that sells mermaid tails made out of bathing suit material. Now, this was an inspiration from her daughter. However, the mermaid tails, it says, will set you back $245 each plus shipping. So, most people cannot afford these type of swimsuits for their little girls. So, they're saying that it's not just for little girls, but it's for big girls. So, they put the whole bottom half of their body in the yeah. tail? Yeah. Um, oh. We'll show you the pictures. Anyway, um, it says that the mermaid tails help give you a great workout and can have you swimming faster than you can imagine in the ocean. So again, this is another entry point into telling you that there are things under the sea. So bit by bit, remember how they put things around, eventually they close up the net and you don't know what hits you. So go back, look this up on Animal Planet about the mermaids because it's really a fascinating piece. I think it's about an hour and a half to watch and I sat through it all and I rarely can keep my... The, Things don't keep my attention for that long, usually, that's out there. Okay, now I told you last time that we talked about the man who went to the doctor's office in India because his right eye was twitching and they pulled out a five-inch worm from his conjunct conjunctiva. 
And I said, if it's there, it's probably somewhere else because they know they're saying, oh my God, a parasite. And remember what I write about parasites and how the, how the Illuminati, the global handers are parasitic on you. And there has to be a physical representation of this non-physical attachment that they have. So they're bringing this out, first of all, in India, which of course we expected, but lo and behold, we have a television show on ET, uh, on this, it's called ET on Discovery, Fit, and Health. And the show is called Diagnosis, Dead or Alive, and there's a man named Kurt who has a mysterious medical ailment who's suffering from chest pains. Well, guess what? They found out, after the doctors were totally stumped, that it is parasites. His doctors ultimately discovered something he hadn't seen in 30 years of practicing medicine. He had live parasites infecting his chest cavity. The results were the lump of the burrowing. And it says the parasite is usually seen only in Southeast Asia, leading Kurt to suspect it may have come from imported crab at a sushi restaurant, which I doubt Yuck. is highly likely. But you want to remember, we do have on our site our parasites. Cleanse 3L. You want to get the parasites out of your body because that will help those who you feel are parasitic in your life, from the global handlers to people in your life, removing them. So keep that in mind because you're going to hear more about this. The okay, next thing I have to tell you about, which I'm sure you're going to want to sign right up for this, is bird poop. Okay? Oh, I, have, I, have, <laughs> I like the look on his I face. Like, I, I actually am more familiar with dog poop and well, cat poop. Well, that I know, but I'm familiar with cow poop and pig poop and chicken poop. So between the two of She's us, we've got it covered. Yes, she is. <laughs> okay, back to bird poop. Um, now, this is called a geisha facial. Ooh. It's made from actual bird poop. It was made popular, they said, by Victoria Beckham. Popular with who? I don't know. Maybe more bird birds? I'm not sure. But the bird poop facial says has a new fan who's Tom Cruise. Now this facial sells for $180 a pop. Personally, you could just I, stand under a flock and keep no, your no, face no, no, no. I'm going to sell it. I'm going to put it on the site. I will sell it to you for half price, ninety dollars. You come to me, I'll smear bird poop all over your face. Okay, mm -hmm. so we'll do it half price. So don't say our prices aren't good. All right, he says Tom doesn't go for Botox. He doesn't go for surgery, but he recently started experimenting with the Nightingale Poo Facial. So who wants to do that? I don't know. Is that a Scientology thing? Uh, it doesn't say. It's but well, but as full of poop sometimes. Victoria you know? Beckham it says made it popular. Mm -hmm. And um, it says they borrowed the techniques from the geishas who once used the nightingale droppings as a natural exfoliant. Um, they apply the exfoliating mixture, they use an ultraviolet light to sanitize the skin in the hour long procedure. I would want the ultraviolet light used on the nightingale poop first and sanitize that. I wouldn't first. put any kind of poop on me. <laughs> I'm not putting it on me because I don't care again, how sanitized it was. Think I would of not the mind use pattern. Poop on my face. No, think of the mind pattern. You're, you're facing literally. Poop. I'll use, I'll use the, mm -hmm. the, the good four letter word. Well, whoever invented that's probably laughing all the way to the bank. Well, I'm sure they are. But we'll do it cheaper. We, we're telling you now. Right into Patricia. See what she has to say. I'll <laughs> save all the dog poop out there. <laughs> there you go. We'll start a new trend. Okay. Speaking of things you can do with your face, um, the next thing I want to tell you about is uh, Botox. Because Botox, as you know, is a star. I think it's chemically reproduced now. I haven't done as much research. Maybe you know more than I do at this point. But it began as a snake poison venom that they would inject into your skin, which basically paralyzes your muscles, relaxes them, and voila, no wrinkles. So now I believe it's uh, you know other things. But women are doing it this at an earlier age. And oftentimes in their 20s now, and it reminded me of the reports we did a few years ago on Viagra when the young men were using the Viagra who didn't need it to prolong their erections. Well, now the women, the young women who really don't need Botox are doing this. And then um, because they're talking about that eventually, you know, they will never have lines because their face will always be basically paralyzed. So again, think of what they're doing to your face. Think of my blocks. What are you facing? You are paralyzing yourself. You are, you know, pooping on yourself. Think of this as, and this is what people are, want to do, you know, not me. Okay, now leaning on, because you know I love to dig up all this, fun, these fun facts, as my, probably my older son would call them. Breastfeeding. Breastfeeding, for some odd reason, is a topic of controversy, which I have never understood because breastfeeding is one of the most natural things in the world. However, breastfeeding was taken away, like in my mother's generation, and replaced with uh, commercial stuff, which 
you know, people can make money on, they can't make money on breast milk, you would think, but now they're kind of putting this back into the public eye and somehow or another they're finding a way to make money on it. So here we go. Uh, and someone wrote asking me to comment on this, um, and I wasn't going to actually, because <laughs> I thought this is so ridiculous, but because I was asked and because it's not going away again, I'm commenting on it. TLC has a, um, oh, let's see, well, I've got several things on breastfeeding. Let's see which one I want to tell you about first. Okay, right, here we go. This is the breastfeeding show. I'm going to start there. The breastfeeding reality show it says maybe coming to your living room soon. Now, again, why, why do we need this? I told you about the Time Cover magazine where the woman's standing there with about a four-year-old kid sucking on her breast. And I said, this isn't natural, this isn't good. And of course, uh, in underdeveloped countries, sometimes, yes, that maybe that is the only form of food they have. But in developed countries, we have other forms of food for our children. We don't need to have somebody four years old nipping on our breasts with teeth. So, what they're going to do, I don't know. Um, and why are they are doing that? Again, they're mixing you totally up with what sexuality is about. Breastfeeding has to do with imprinting your child, that's your mother's milk, and between about the, when the baby is first born to nine months, to educate you a little bit, the breast milk changes to accommodate the needs of your specific child. After about nine months, the quality of breast milk goes down, and the reason is because the body starts closing itself down because it's preparing for another pregnancy. That's how the human species perpetuates itself. So you're not supposed to be breastfeeding your kids up to like four, five, six, seven years old. That's not right. Uh, that totally is going to mess them up sexually. That's totally going to tie them to the mother, and that's also totally going to remove the mother from having a relationship with her husband. So. Anyway, this is what you have to look forward to is a breastfeeding reality TV show. Is that ridiculous or yes, what? Yes, and that's why I stopped putting uh, dog poop and bird poop and breast milk in my coffee. Yeah. Well, speaking of that, now that you know, that may sound far out, but here we go. Because I was already screwed up, so. Well, this guy know. is even more screwed up than yeah. you. Okay, this guy's name possible. is, yeah, this is possible. This guy's name is Jeff. This is the next story. TLC has a, has a, a show called Strange Sex. Okay, this is a 34-year-old man who breastfeeds from his wife to help his erectile dysfunction problem. Okay? So, here we've got him on the show, and it has him latched on like a newborn. So, for some odd reason, they want their last names withheld. But, but they show themselves on camera. But they That's show brilliant. themselves on camera. They don't hide their identity. Yeah. Now, apparently... They started this incorporating into their sexual routine, it says, a few months after the birth of their first child. The girl, who is now age two, stopped breastfeeding, but the, the wife, Michelle, who is 27, now produces milk for the couple's eight-month-old son. And so after the son has his fill, then apparently the husband latches on for his fill. She so gets leftovers. He gets the leftovers. He said it significantly alleviates his symptoms of erectile dysfunction. Now, you may think this is, uh, is strange enough, but it gets stranger, if you can believe that. Okay, originally they submitted um, uh, their application to be on this strange sex show. Again, who wants to put this stuff on camera? But apparently a lot of people do. They originally submitted their application under vampirism because at first, in order to help his erectile dysfunction program, he believed that he could bite her breasts, get the blood, and that would help him um, have an erection. But when she became pregnant, apparently the little bites moved <laughs> to the nipple, <laughs> latched on, and decided that, oh, this is it. So here we go. So, you cannot make this up, people. No, you cannot. No. So the vampirism had to stop when she began vi breastfeeding. So then, you know, her breast became target for the choice of his bites. And then they got the idea to experiment together. And apparently he has no erectile dysfunction problem anymore. And, quote, they thought of it as a natural transition. Who wouldn't, yeah. right? Yeah, and he's not sexually deviated. No, anyway. he doesn't have a problem. No. Okay, Biting so... people drinking their milk is quite normal. Yeah, and, and it just, it just, it floors me. Okay, now from there, I want to take you down south. Oh, in front of everybody. In front of everybody. The, the V word. You remember now this is no longer peace. This is vagina. Okay? Mm -hmm. Stuart has to put his head under paper bag. Mm -hmm. All right. So wash your mouth out with soap later. Yeah. Well, here we've got, again, more about the vagina because we're putting that out again for people. 
Um, it says here the typical, and this is what you want to know, so be sure and turn up your sound. The typical tampon or panty liner commercial might feature flowers, unicorns, and women in white bikinis. But Carefree decided to get real with its latest panty liner ad by discussing some natural bodily functions. Again, who wants to watch this in the middle of a comedy? Okay, its approach, which included the words like vagina and discharge, offended some, who in turn complained to the advertising bureau. The ad features a naked woman standing in stark white room, strategically flowered by, uh, covered by flower petals. You can, you can visualize this. Okay, it might seem like the standard feminine hygiene product formula, which personally I don't even believe those belong on television, because if you need it, you're going to go to the store. You don't need to be told about it at this point. Okay. And this woman says, even that quote, even that bit of discharge in between our period is our body working to keep the vagina healthy. Now, apparently they had reports of complaints as soon as it first aired in New Zealand. I don't understand why. Okay. It's the first time a major brand has had the guts to use real words, not euphemisms or diminu diminu diminutive, diminutive terms. Okay. So anyway, women want frank discussions, but not on television, not with your kids sitting by you watching the show. I've been there, done that. I really don't want to be there with my little kids. And I'm explaining to them what discharge is at this point in their life. They don't need to know. I need to know. Women need to know. And we know. We don't need the television telling us. So it says, the ad is a much needed departure from other feminine hygiene campaigns. It's refreshing for a company to admit that women aren't beautiful, vagina-less flowers, even if they're hiding behind them, and that discharge is perfectly normal and okay. All right? So all you women out there should now be happy with your body. Okay, moving you right along, I see you have nothing to say. <laughs> what can you say to that, right? <laughs> nothing that I can put on the internet. That's right. I can barely put this on the internet. Here we go. Okay, from there, we want to take you into Air Sex Championships. Now, I talked to you about this before, a year ago, because this is, um, I think it's the second one they've held. I might be wrong. could even be third. But the Air Sex Championships are when you get up on stage by yourself and you pretend to have sex with somebody who isn't there. Okay? So that could be leading you into new world religion, astral it, ritual, astral ritual, group sex, public sex, so forth. Now there's only two rules, which I'm sure wouldn't be difficult, right? All climaxes must be simulated, and there must always be an, an, another imaginary person during your routine. Okay, those are the two rules. Then you need a moniker and a song. And then you have three judges that critique your show based on your foreplay, your intercourse, and your sexual energy. Now, hear this, because this is interesting. Air sex will be an Olympic sport one day. Now, that's what they said about snowboarding. Remember when snowboarding first came out? Mm -hmm. And they said to people, oh, snowboarding is a fad, it'll Wait, go Wait, air away. sex is going to be an Olympic? Yeah. Really? That's what they said. Oh. They're claiming. See, I always thought air sex was when your partner had to be blown up. <laughs> I mean, like the rubber doll the 18 yeah. cops looked for in the river? I thought that was, you know... Yeah, well, apparently not. So, anyway, it just, um, it just again, I'm amazing what people will do for some, you know, entertainment, what they'll do, what they'll put out there for other people to see. It's just amazing. Um, but anyway, yeah, so you can think about this when it comes out on the Olympics. They're making fun of it now, but again, they're opening up your frequency for this stuff. Maybe they'll have... Uh breast sucking competitions as well. <laughs> That's a possibility. Oh, biting, blood, blood <laughs> yeah. biting. Well, I'll thing. tell you what, we are not going to enter, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, we're going to the name, <laughs> I'll take it out. Okay. Now, this one I should, speaking of blood sucking, I should have put this on there. I kind of put this one in kind of for fun, but a lot of this is kind of for fun in my opinion. Anyway, is zombie cakes. Zombie wedding cakes. What a way to start your relationship. So take a look at a few of these pictures because if, if zombies your thing and blood and guts and getting married, again, with what frequency are you putting into your relationship when you start off with these things? Okay, if you have troubles, however, this was written up here, the world's first sex school opened up in Vienna, Austria, where they will be teaching students how to be better lovers. They will stay in mixed sex dormitories and will be expected to practice their homework. What's the address on that? Because <laughs> I have to be None uh, of in your Austria business. next. next None year. of your business. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, moving forward to bald heads. But I, how come you always have these sex stories? Because Why I think they're fascinating. That? Because that's all about new world religion, and this is how, showing people they're programming. Hmm. Maybe they have a discussion later. Yeah, no, I think it's fascinating what they do and how they lead people, and people just walk right on down because they'll tell you why. 
because there are three ways that people well they're, they're really people are they're trying to put you into the, the lower part of your body into your animalistic part from your mental they want to take you down to your genitalia where basically you have another mind it's your animal mind because that's your mind for self survival if you don't have sex then the species is gone so therefore the Illuminati wants to keep you down there because instinctively the animal part of you knows if you don't have sex the species will die out that's buried deep within your genetics so they're trying continually to push you down and Stuart and I are doing the opposite we're trying to pull you up here so if you want to know what sexuality is really about you go read our book true reality of sexuality how to pull yourself up how to connect through the, into the God mind with it not down below for other people to utilize your energy so that's it's, it's, it is a big thing out there and that's what the Illuminati uh, it's a uh, excellent form of mass control and they, you can see what they're doing with it all right Back to bald heads. I noticed you diverted that subject. Why are you looking at me when you said bald head? <laughs> because I'm looking into your eyes. Mm. All right. Bald heads. Now, we all know that, or I guess by this point you should know, that a lot of most people who undergo chemotherapy for cancer wind up losing their hair. And so a lot of things have happened with this through the years. You know, there have been women who get together and create... Um, uh, caps for for people who lose their hair there have been uh, locks for love where people grow their hair long and they cut off like 12 inches and they give it for wigs so all kinds of things to help people through their chemotherapy well now they're taking it in my opinion and they're morphing that into something else um, Barbies uh, are coming out with a bald-headed Barbie uh, they Mattel created one for a four-year-old girl who was suffering from cancer and of course everybody else wanted one for their children because they wanted the people to know, they wanted these little kids to know that it was okay if you were bald and other people weren't. And then they went through the phase, I've had this on the news, you've probably seen it, the mothers sometimes shave their head so the kid doesn't feel alone when they lose their hair. Now, um, there are also the Disney show. They have the princesses with shown with, shown with their head shaved bald heads and of course there have been movies out Demi Moore was very famous for, I don't even know the name of her um, movie that she was in but she was one of the first women who shaved her head for whatever show it was was that G.I. Jane or something like that many years ago and then every once in a while the women will show, shave their heads for some show that they're in okay now the last thing I want to tell you before I want to tell you the punchline which you probably already are there if you've been following this and you know the trends there was a reality show that the woman had to shave her head to receive her prize and I think it was about a hundred thousand dollars it was significant and when I went back to go to that link when I was researching this to put the news together interestingly enough that link uh, that the uh, YouTube video and the article had been removed you know it says sorry no, no longer available but anyway they had this woman and they showed her crying as her head was shaved she had long hair maybe about my length she was being shaved, she was crying as the hair was coming off. Of course, when it was over, you know, they showed her with her makeup and smiling and earrings, and, you know, she felt okay. Of course, she had $100,000 mm -hmm. in her pocket. Mm -hmm. So she was smiling then. Yeah, and she could, um, of course, move forward. But again, the point is that they're moving you forward into androgyny. Are you male or are you female? They kind of started with the men in the buzz cuts. You know, of course, that happens in the military. We're all the same. They remove your hair. And what is your hair? Your hair is your strength. Okay, so they're, first of all, they've gone through the buzz cuts and they've got the guys doing that. And now they're going through with the women and they're getting that done. And if you look even at some of the, um, oh, the Star Trek shows or whatever, and they show people that are androgynous. They show the aliens, you know, without any hair. The greys have no hair. The Syrians have no hair. So again, they're kind of double whammy-ing double whammy you, is that a word? <laughs> Where that you have no hair. You think more about your alien origins, you're neither male nor female, you get into that androgyny. And in the meantime, every time you see a bald head, it's like the color pink, think cancer. So they're putting that into you as well. So lots of things are going on. Don't get mixed up in that. Keep your frequencies clean and clear. Okay, um, on to just, this is interesting. Um, 
Michael Norton, a Harvard professor, gave envelopes of money to people as part of his research and he told some people to spend it on yourself and some people to spend it on other people. Then at the end of the day they made a little phone call and they said, are you happy? Well the people who spent it on themselves were not as happy as the people who spent it on others. And this is exactly what we're talking about in our money webinar, money program webinar, which is actually ongoing right as we speak, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week. Um, where we're talking about how people feel guilty and have issues for having their own money and they are programmed to give it away and of course there are studies like this that are reinforcing give it away nothing for you now if you're not on this webinar because we're just about full up on this one it's too late for you to join it but we do have a second one coming up uh, in August I'm not sure of the dates I think it might be this second week, but I'm not sure. It's posted online where we're going to tell you more about what the money program is, how you buy into it, and how you can move through that so, yes, you too can pay your bills because God mind is infinite abundance. And it's up to you, which you really, you already have it anyway, to access that, and we tell you how. So if you um, haven't signed up for that, it's a very special offer. We're doing uh, helping you remove your financial blocks this summer because there's so many people who are writing to us with issues and that's what we're here for is to help you get over what your issues are so let's get rid of those because money's energy bottom line it anyway go read it on the site okay, back to the hobbit now you know the hobbit is being remade right okay now you're going to have another reason to fly because of the Hobbit movie. Because guess what Air New Zealand is doing? Do you know you're going to be flying? I read it or saw it. You saw know. it? Okay. They're going to be launching theme flights in honor of J.R.R. Tolkien's novel and Peter Jackson's two-part movie. Now, the interesting thing that occurred to me is, remember I told you about the Hello Kitty flights and who's going to fly on Hello Kitty flights? Now we have the Hobbit flight. So... Is this just gonna, world going to be like a giant Disneyland by the time we're done? Is a flight only for short, ugly people? Well, that's what it With says. Yeah. yeah, I guess you can't go, right? No. Since I'm you're the pretty I'm one. Beautiful. Yeah, you're the pretty one. But, you know, so, so what's going to be the next themed thing? I mean, again, it's like a, to me, it sounds like Disneyland. You know, let's play the music. We don't know where we are. We don't know if we're up. We don't know if we're down. What a perfect way to program people into fantasy land and take them away from reality. More and more and more. Speaking of which, leading into this story, which I think is, I think these are great stories. These are the, the the highlights of what I have to present to you. I was just warming up a little bit. E L F. Now you remember how Stuart and I are telling you all the time how that's being beamed at you. Well, you know what? In their own way, they are admitting it because just today there was an article that came out that a radio signal that's being transmitted out of a submarine base is likely behind reports of garage doors failing to open and close in southeastern Connecticut. The U.S. Navy actually admitted that. They said that the signal is part of the Enterprise Land Mobile Radio System, which is used by military to coordinate responses with civil emergency workers. So they can make your garage door openers not work. So if that's what they can do, what else can they do and make and, and stop working in your home or activate depending upon what they want to do. So I thought that was really fascinating because remember the little bits and tidbits, they always have to tell you what they're doing, but it's up to you to interpret what's going on, okay? Convicted killers were released in Oregon. Can you believe this? The budget cuts, it says, may not kill, but they can lead to the release of accused killers. Oregon's Lane County this month freed 92 of its prisoners. There's that lucky number 11. 9 plus 2 is an 11. Now, and they admit this. Some of them are accused killers. So why don't they put them in another facility and then maybe in that other facility let out the lesser criminals if it's a budget cut? Because you know what? These people are going to go out. There's a lot of programming that happens in prisons. They're going to create some havoc and then they're going to say, oh my gosh. But that's why they're letting them out. That's right. The country... The county is, I'm sorry, the county is facing a hundred million budget deficit. There's a one, remember we've got 92, 11, 100 million. And it says other things have fallen victim to cuts. Nearly 65 positions in the sheriff's department. A six plus five is an 11. There's three going on right there. Okay. So, again, if you're in Lane County, Oregon, run. Okay. Augmented reality glasses. Now, here we go back to the Disneyland stuff I was talking to you about just a couple of minutes ago. It was announced last week 
that the, it's called Search Giant Google has patented the design of its augmented reality glasses known as Project Glass. Three patents for a wearable display device with, character, with characteristics of the much talked about futuristic glasses were submitted last autumn. The patents reference such functions as displaying data in front of the wearer's eyes and playing audio. And there's a picture so you can see what it looks like. Now, this leads into my next story, which I found even more fascinating, how it all kind of happens at once, because I've never heard of this guy, and maybe you have, but apparently he's been around for a while. His name is Steve Mann, and he is touted as Augmented Reality Pioneer. He visited uh, McDonald's in Paris with his family earlier this month, and he has a system called the iTap, which is physically installed in his skull that records photos and video and can display augmented reality data directly in the user's line of sight. So you can see he has one real eye and he has one augmented eye. Just like a Borg. Well, they listen to this, okay? After he ordered uh, whatever it was, um, it says... Blah, blah, blah. Okay, to recap, I want to, I want to be sure you get all these facts because it's too good not to miss. He's a tenured professor at the University of Toronto. He wears something called an iTap, which is a small camera computer that he had physically connected to his skull. He's been experimenting in the realm of wearable computing for years, and the most recent iteration essentially makes him a cyborg. They're admitting that. A human melded with a machine. That distinction was apparently lost on a trio of employees at that Paris McDonald's because after they, he ordered, they asked him what he was wearing. And apparently he carries documentation from his doctor saying that it is not removable without special tools. He uses it when he's traveling and when people want to learn more about the product. He offered this documentation to the McDonald's employees and it wasn't long, it says, before the three employees assaulted him and kicked him out of the Paris location. Surprise, surprise. You know, that's Paris for you. They don't, they don't put up with this stuff in France. Okay. It's, Except they do let the Germans in every time they invade. <laughs> they do sometimes. Yeah. All right. It says here, because I don't want you to miss this. Um, it says that the McDonald's employees harassed, intimidated, and damaged him irre irrevocably. It says, uh, Ray Kurzweil, a well-known futurist, I haven't heard of him, but maybe you have. He calls this the first attack on a cyborg in history, and man's importance. Notice even his last name, we want to talk about symbolism, man, okay? Man, humankind, man. Man's importance is to the field of human-computer interaction cannot be measured. That a pioneer like man would be accosted in Paris of all places, Paris's big ritual place, is a travesty. That it would happen in that paragon of openness and light, McDonald's, is an absolute shame. All right. So I want you to think about the ramifications of this and what it means for you. People are doing this. It's not behind the scenes anymore. It is open. Okay. The last piece I have for you, which goes back to kind of where we started a little bit, is the Olympic Games. Because again, and sex, because you know how I like to talk about that. Okay. That's what I'm a little worried about. <laughs> okay, the Olympic Games. Do you know that in the Olympic Games that they give to each athlete 15 condoms, mm. male and female? So if you have two people coupling up, or one alone, I guess maybe, but two people coupling up, that's 30 times they're going to have sex during the Olympic Games. And how many days is the Olympics? Uh, is it 12? It's 15. 15? 16. 16? Like okay, that means at least twice a day then. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because apparently, now I didn't know that they just handed these out, but they do. Apparently, um... The, the, they, in the 2000, this is 2000, Sydney Games, they originally gave out 70,000 condoms to the athletes, but they had to order in an extra 20,000 because they ran out. So it Do says... people stop that? <laughs> it says, since then, an order of 100,000 has been the norm. And I thought I saw an article saying 150,000, but I couldn't find it. So I can't really quote that. You can look that up for yourself and see. But what's interesting, uh, this is a, a soccer star and Olympic gold medalist named Hope, Hope, sorry, Hope Solo. When that's kind of again an odd name. Um, she's talking, or she or he, maybe who knows these days, talked about that sex comes as either a celebratory act or a consolation prize. And she says, "quote I've seen people having sex right out on in the open, on the grass, between buildings. People are getting down and dirty." Unquote. It says. 
This is not the first time athletes have openly discussed the sex fest that is the Olympics. Who would have thought? All right, but when you think about what happened at the original Olympics, they were all naked. They were naked, and it was about sexuality, mm -hmm. and it was about sexual ritual. So apparently, they're going back to that. Here we have a former Olympian, Matthew S Y E D, side in 2008. He said he wrote a piece for the Times of London about the Olympics, and he says that the Olympics and sexual intercourse go hand in hand. Uh, quote, Olympic athletes have to display an unnatural level of self-discipline in the build-up to big competitions. How else is this going to manifest itself than with a volcanic release of pent-up hedonism? I guess that's another way of saying orgasm. John Godina, an Olympic shot putter, recently told ABC News that athletes are at the games to work hard but that they're willing to play a little. He says athletes go there focused and once their job is done they have fun. They don't necessarily go there looking for it but things happen. You learn not to ask a lot of questions." Unquote. So right there that tells you all these things that we're talking about. The Olympics that are coming up. We're talking to you about sexual ritual. We're talking about what the Illuminati does with that energy. Right here they are telling you in bits and pieces what they're planning, what's going on. You have to put the pieces together. And that's the only way you're going to see the big picture. But they do tell you what's happening. So don't be surprised you know, at what's out there. Don't say, oh my gosh, you know, it, it just, I'm so surprised it happened out of the blue. Well, it doesn't happen out of the blue. You are set up. Remember my piece on being primed. You are set up every single day. Do your deprogramming work. Do your protection work. Do your hyperspace oversoul work. Um, you know, do what you can to take care of you and don't participate in what is being set up for humanity, like Mr. Man or Dr. Man or whatever you want to talk about. Don't let that be you. You know, use this. This is the strongest thing that you have. And don't practice drinking breast milk and simulated <laughs> sex in front of other people because that's not right. Yeah. And, and mermaid fins. I mean, there's so much going on out there. Well, if you wear mermaid fins, then you can't do that. They can't? Well, Maybe I don't you know. should wear mermaid fins. <laughs> well, they probably have them those naughty things. anatomically correct. Would probably, <laughs> that's the next thing that they're going to bring up. I don't know. But anyway, there's so much going on out there. And, you know, to sit back and observe it but not participate in it, it is like it, it's, it's a novel that's opening up and playing for you. So don't get caught up in it. We are having a great week that's going to be coming up, our Oversoul Hyperspace Immersion Week, mm -hmm. where we're going to be talking about the four elements, fire, earth, air, and water. And we are going to be giving you experiential information and different from what you hear here, mm -hmm. by yourself, to do what you need to do to open up your own genetics, to open up the strength of your own mind pattern, to find out who you are and why you're here on this earth. It's going to be amazing. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited. I think we have a few spaces left. Again, go on this website, contact Patricia, events at expansions.com. She's got the details. We have people coming in from all over the world, and that's why I said I think we still have a couple spaces left, but not many. So if you are interested, time sticking, get here because the information that you get at our seminars is going to help you deal with what's going on in the world in a way that, again, you can observe, you can understand, but you don't have to participate. You can move on. You can be happy. You can be healthy. You can be wealthy. All those things, regardless of what's being planned for you, you don't have to do it. Right? Well, I can't top that. You can't top that. No, sir. All right, so we have anything else that we want to tell them? Yes, uh, don't forget that oh. next month in August I will be in Iceland, the UK, Ireland, and Morocco. Those of you who want to see me, contact me. And, uh, of course, don't forget to make your reservations to come for the 10th Annual Expansions Conference at the end of September, followed by the amazing Rose and Bear trip to Russia. So uh, go online, go to expansions.com, and look up all the... Uh, details and information. Yeah, we always have interesting, amazing things for you. So, you know what? Don't limit yourself. We don't limit ourselves. Life is moving along. Life continues to improve every day for us. It gets bigger and it gets better as we go into and explore the positive aspect of the limitless abundance of the God mind. Mm -hmm. Be sure you get your very special summer sale package on that. We have that especially low price. If you're really, really, really financially challenged to go to Patricia, we have payment plans. We want you to pay because that sets the frequency that you can pay. This is a reality where we have money. Money represents energy. Your mind pattern helps create all of that. Rather than deny it, we greet the challenge. We move into it and we don't let anything hold us back. We continue to move forward with open hearts, 
open mind, open eyes, open so that we can move into the God mind. Mm -hmm. I was going to do this, but I don't know. <laughs> You're going to say peace, uh, yeah, right? Yeah. Peace of what? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Well, I'm going to go put my merman fins on now and right. go simulate sex someplace. <laughs> so until next time, this is Stuart A. Swordlow. And Janet Diamoria Swordlow. For Expansions.com, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.